to celebrate our heritage, our history, and the blood that covers us. We love you and ask, Lord God, that you anoint this service, edify your people as we glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. At this time, we will have our scripture reading followed by a special presentation from our Generation Next ministry. reading will be taken from the 90th division of Psalms verses 1 and 2. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born or you brought forth the whole world, 
From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. This concludes our reading. This is the word of God, and I do believe that is true. The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Christ in this struggle. We are encouraged by their example to keep running our race and to keep the faith. Amen. Because when they found themselves at a crossroad and their backs were against the wall, they held on and kept the faith. So we just want to encourage someone today to hold on and keep the faith. Because in Jesus Christ, we have the victory.
revolutionize health care. We celebrate Bessie Coleman, the first black woman to earn her pilot's license. She was denied entry to earn her license in America. So she moved to Paris, France, where she earned her pilot's license. She once said, I will not take no for an answer, and neither will I. We remember Fannie Lou Hamer, an American civil rights activist and the co-founder of the Freedom Democratic Party in 1964. She also represented at the Democratic National Convention while securing all rights for African Americans. We remember Ruby Bridges, the first African American child to go to an all white school in the South. She kept the faith. We remember Catherine, Catherine Johnson. She's a pioneer in mathematics and an engineer at NASA. She kept the faith. We remember Amanda Gorman, poet, activist, and the first youth poet laureate. We remember Madam Vice President Kamala Harris. She is the first female and African American to become Vice President of the United States of America. She graduated from Howard University and HBCU. We remember all who have died in the fight for justice, including Breonna Taylor, an unarmed black woman who was shot and killed in her Louisville, Kentucky home by, black, by white police officers. We remember Ethel Hedgeman Lyle, born right here in St. Louis, Missouri on February 10, 1887, a builder of women, alumni of Charles Sumner High School, a champion of education, and the creator of the first black women's collegiate service-based organization. We celebrate a man who founded a movement in 1993, established on the pillars of preaching, teaching, and praying, a movement that has and continues to minister to the masses in word, and indeed, through prayer and provision, a man who has kept the faith through it all, and who inspires us to do so week after week, we are talking about our faith hero and pastor, the Reverend Dr. Freddie James Clark. Transitioning to our hymn, that's one thing that I'm so glad about, that the blood would never lose its power. I can't hear nobody. Tell somebody, say, the blood would never lose its power. How I know, because it reaches to the highest mountain, and it flows to the lowest valley. I'm so grateful that every day I wake up, I thank God the blood has me covered and has me protected. Come on, let's sing this song together. The blood that Jesus shed. Come on, church. The blood.
Hallelujah. What a powerful, powerful, powerful hymn of the church. The blood that Jesus shed for me. It will never, no never, lose its power. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. We now transition to our prayer period, knowing that the blood still works, that it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley. We are so mindful of the many prayer concerns that have come in through the church by phone call and email. And family, we want you to know that we are praying for you. Our leaders, our ministers are praying for you each and every day. At this time, we'd like to lift up our bereaved families. Our prayers are with Victor McNeil Jr. and Vanilla McNeil, who funeralized their father, Deacon Victor McNeil Sr., who is also the brother of Eric and Kaylin McNeil, Arthelda Williams, and Sandra McNeil. The Riddle Springer family, in the passing of their loved one, Reverend Irvin Riddle Springer, of Alton, Illinois. Lastly, if you are watching today's service and you know not this Jesus Christ of whom we speak and of whom we sing, we extend this invitation to you today. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. So after the proclamation of the word today, Give us a call at the number you see on your screen and let us know that you have made that confession to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior that we might celebrate with you. Also, if you don't have a church home, we would love to welcome you here to the Shalom Church City of Peace under the leadership of our pastor, the Reverend Dr. F. James Clark, that we may walk this journey to victory together. Amen. Our choir is going to lead us in song, after which we will be led in prayer. Amen. and eternal God, our Father, how we do love and adore you. We thank you for your mercy and we thank you for your grace. We are living this moment really because of you. And so, Father, through every storm, through every night, through every test and trial, we thank you for your precious hand that leads us on and helps us to stand. Father God, we thank you that it is in you that we live and that we move and that we have our being. In every generation, you are the same God, yesterday, today, and forevermore. And so we thank you for your presence, we thank you for your power, we thank you for your provisions. Father God, as we lift you up on this morning, we come lifting up every family. Lord, you know every family, you know every need. Father God, you are well able to handle every situation. And so we simply pray for families that are in bereavement, Oh God, earth has no sorrow that you're not able to heal. And so God, we pray by the power of the Holy Spirit that you would comfort and camp your ministering angels all around them. Lord, you are the great I am. That is everything we stand in need of. We find right here 
in your presence. You are our shepherd who supplies our every need. Father God, we lift up families who have experienced sickness. We recognize even now that your blood still works, that by your stripes we are healed. We do confess, oh God, not only our physical sickness, but our spiritual illness as well. We recognize that we have sinned and fall short of your glory, but we thank you that your blood will never lose its power. Thank you that it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley. So we thank you for the power in your blood to heal us from our physical and our spiritual illness in the name of Jesus. Then, Father God, for our pastor, we pray. We thank you for him. We thank you for his family. We pray your continued blessings that you to continue to supply every need according to your riches in glory in the name of Jesus. And then, Father God, for every family in the Shalom Church and abroad, God, you know all of our needs, and we thank you for supplying again according to your riches and glory. And we thank you right now for your word that's coming forward. We pray that you would prepare our hearts to receive a word from you that we might live better for you. And if anyone is listening who does not know you in the pardoning of their sins, we pray by the power of the Spirit that you would minister to them in such a way that they would know you for themselves in the name of Jesus. And then, Father God, we're going to be mindful in all things to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. For certainly you are worthy from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same. Your name is worthy to be praised. In the name of Jesus, we pray and thank you for victory. Amen and thank God. Amen.
Praise the Lord. We certainly are grateful for the Zion songs that the choir has blessed us with on this morning, including our Generation Next ministry. Amen. We are grateful. We are grateful for them. We certainly reverence Almighty God on, on this morning. We honor our pastor, the Reverend Dr. F. James Clark, to whom I am so grateful for this privilege that he has afforded me to stand before the people of God. Thank you, Dr. Clark, and certainly to everyone in your respective places. As you can see and have heard, today's services certainly recognizes that this is the last calendar day, February 28th, of Black History Month. Yet our Generation Next ministry and all of their potentials have reminded us that this certainly is not the last day of black people making history. Amen. Also worth noting, this is the second Sunday of the Lent season as we liturgically journey to the Resurrection Sunday where we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And lastly, uh, but certainly not, not least, this is the day that we celebrate the Lord's Supper. At the end of this live stream service, we will celebrate the Lord's Supper with those who are, those who are watching and those who are able to come up to the grounds on today beginning at 10 o'clock a.m. We are looking forward uh, to seeing you on, on today. Our text for preaching this morning is found in the Gospel of Mark chapter 8. It's Mark chapter 8. I'll be reading verses 31 through 38. But certainly in the preaching, I will reference also verses 27 through 30, and I certainly encourage you to read that entire chapter. It's such a powerful passage of scripture, uh, and I think it would certainly bless, bless your life. It's Mark chapter 8, verses 31 through 38. This passage also has some various... Um, uh, couples in, in the Gospel of Matthew as well as Luke and John, there are some very familiar passages. There's a little bit of variation uh, in those writings, but uh, the point is still, is still the same. So I encourage you to, to do your research and look at that as well. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. And he spake that saying openly. And Peter took him and began to rebuke him. But when he turned about and looked on his disciples, he rebuked Peter saying, get thee behind me, Satan. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? 
For whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with his holy angels. This concludes our reading. This is the word of God. I do believe that it is true. The grass withers and the flowers fade away, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen. The cost of discipleship. The cost of discipleship. The cost of something generally indicates its value or worth. For instance, if we were to go shopping for a pair of winter boots, we would probably purchase the most expensive pair that we could afford. Not simply because we must have the best style or the most popular brand name in the store, but because most of the time, the more you pay, the better the quality of the product. The same goes for clothing, for tools, and, and even for, for food. The list literally goes on and on. Thus goes the cliche, we get what we pay for. Listen, I know you're in your homes, and, and uh, won't you just say it to yourself with me? We get what we pay for. Here's a bit of social political irony to go with that cliche. In 2016, far too many of us failed to vote. And as a result, we had to endure from, from the previous White House blatant discrimination from a cabinet that was predominantly void of people of color. We saw an increase in hate crime. More uh, this year than the last decade have actually been recorded. We saw immigrant children stripped from their parents and the disregard for proven scientific evidence both about climate change and this, this devastating COVID-19 pandemic that we are yet in. And then recently we reached over 500,000 deaths in the United States alone. What is my point? We get what we, what we pay for on this matter, what we vote or fail to vote for. In the text, Jesus uh, took his disciples on a field trip of sorts in Caesarea Philippi. While on this trip, which actually was his journey to Jerusalem, where he ultimately will be crucified. But he asked them, who do men say that I am? John the Baptist, Elijah, or one of the other prophets, they replied. But then he asked, who do you say that I am? The Christ, the son of the living God, Peter replied. And after acknowledging Peter's declaration and informing him that his response had not come from human knowledge, Jesus in essence told his disciples to keep that to themselves. But then he shared openly that he must suffer, be crucified, and be raised from the dead. Peter perhaps thinking that he had gained some some brownie points for answering the initial question, took Jesus aside and rebuked him. Incidentally, uh, it ain't, and I want to say ain't, it was used in the song a minute ago, so it's okay to use it again. It ain't never a good idea to get in front of the man or woman of God who God has placed over our lives. Jesus, in turn, uh, he looks at the disciples and demonstrated that he was not having an identity crisis, nor did he have a bad memory, for he had seen this form of temptation in the wilderness where Satan tempted him three times to move from his mission. 
Therefore he said to Peter, get behind me, Satan, for your mind is on the things of man and not on the things of God. And at that point, Jesus knew that they didn't really know the cost of discipleship. I won't be before you long, but I have just a couple of points I want to make and I'll, I'll, be, I'll be finished. But the cost of discipleship is understanding that we follow Jesus by faith and not by sight. That is, it matters not that we are morally good, intelligent, or have many accomplishments. Those are things of man. And although Peter initiated this transgression, the magnitude was of such that Jesus turned and rebuked the one, he turned the rebuke of one into a warning to all, all who were looking and listening. Peter, operating out of his self-confidence, perhaps, or boldness, failed to follow Jesus at that point, but was in fact trying to lead Jesus. He, re, he pulled Jesus aside and rebuked him. That sometimes we believe because we have been gifted in the body of Christ, our gifts can gain spiritual merits of sort, which exempt us from stewardly accountability in the context of following. And if not checked, it can turn into a bad case of self-righteousness. The German theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer in his book, The Cost of Discipleship, says it this way. Whenever Christ calls us, his cause leads us to death. And in the Gospel of John, just prior to Jesus uh, making his passion prediction, he says, whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, my servant also will be. And get this, my father will honor the one that serves, that follows me. Say amen, somebody. The cost of discipleship then is understanding that we're not called to deny ourselves of something, but to deny self. When Jesus had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. The song just was led, laid down, laid down this old world and showed up the cross. Yeah, the point is not something, but self. It's been mentioned, it's the Lent season that we're in and most of us are fasting and praying during this season and we're denying ourselves of some stuff. Uh, some of us deny ourselves of fried food chicken, yeah, desserts, ice cream, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we refrain ourselves, some of us from television, or we do something, yet Jesus is asking his would-be disciples to give up their lives, their personal ambition, yeah, their personal motives for a greater good. And the greater good is sharing the joy and suffering of Jesus. Listen, in putting someone else's life before our own. Amen. You know you have to sacrifice when you put others before yourself. Praise the Lord. And as children of God, that's what we're called to do every day. It's so easy for us to get in our feelings when stuff happens. But as the call of God to be the disciple of Jesus Christ, we're called not to think about ourselves, but to think about how we're representing the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Say amen, somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That the apostle Paul writes it like this. He said that, uh, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, plural, being conformed to his death. Praise the Lord. This season of Lent is not about giving up something, but it's really been reminded as disciples of Jesus Christ, we give it all to him. Praise the Lord. 
Praise the Lord. Now, I know all of us are a work in progress, but we got something that we can look at and we can march toward. That is the example of Jesus Christ. Amen. Bonhoeffer will go on to say that this is the paradox of joy in suffering, life in death, brought about by grace, intimacy with Jesus Christ. Amen. That's good stuff. I, I, need to read that, uh, I need to read that again. Every time I read it, it just blesses me. That this is, the, this is the paradox. This is the paradox of joy in suffering. Life that is in death brought about by graced intimacy with Jesus Christ. Yeah, somebody ought to just shout hallelujah right up in here. Amen, amen, and amen. That, 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 that there... There is nothing in life better than being in a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Amen, somebody. Yeah, a whole lot of stuff can happen in our lives. A whole lot of stuff does happen in our lives. But when we think about how God has saved us and we have a personal relationship with the creator of the universe, somehow all of the storms around us start ceasing. Amen, somebody. There's nothing better. There's nothing better than being in a relationship with God, our Savior. Even when we make some mess up, God loves us so much that through the power of the Holy Spirit, he lets us know that we got onto the wrong track and he put us back on the right track again. Who wouldn't serve a God like that? Yeah. That when we consider our mess ups and failures and imperfections, and yet Christ still invites us, to be his, his disciples. Praise the Lord. Think about, think about, don't think about nobody else. Let's think about your own mess ups right now. Yeah, think how many times we, we missed the mark. Think how many times we really, sometimes we even intentionally did, went the wrong direction when the sign says go this way and we went the wrong way. But God still in his grace and mercy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I thank God today for his grace and mercy because I confess I've made some mistakes yeah but the Lord still woke me up this morning and the Lord still started me on my way and I'm grateful today anybody else in here grateful today in your home are you grateful that the Lord's been good to you been better to us than we've been to ourselves hallelujah he still invites us to be his disciples yeah he didn't just talk to Peter but he looked around and saw some others, knew some other folks need to hear this same message. Hallelujah. Yeah, that we want to be a disciple. Just deny ourselves. Take up our cross and follow Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm really, I'm really just about, just about done. That being a disciple is, of Christ is grace to us by the sovereign God. It's grace to us. That means we didn't deserve it. We couldn't earn it. We couldn't buy it. We can't pay for it. We can't cross enough T's and dot enough I's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the mercy of God, we have received salvation. Praise the Lord. I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for that. Yeah, listen to these verses again. For whosoever will save his life, yeah, will lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel's, the same shall save it. Yeah, I know it don't hardly make rational sense, does it? Yeah, but it gets better. It gets better. Verse 36. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Yeah, Dr. Clark was saying right up in here, tumble, tumble, it's getting better. It's getting better. That's how I'm feeling right along in now. You see, because when Jesus compared man who was finite, versus soul, which is infinite, we get the opportunity, opportunity to realize that there is really no comparison with the profit of man to the eternality of the soul. That alone belongs in the hands of God. And, and, and when, you, when you know that, when you grasp that, when you understand that, 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 that God alone is in control of that, that there's nothing about us that's any good. In fact, all of us are going back to the dust. We're going back. We're going back. Tell your neighbor, tell your somebody in your family that we're going back to the dust. We're not here to stay. 
We're not here to stay, praise God. But while we are here, we're able to make a difference, yeah, to those around us and those who we love and those who, the strangers that we meet along the way, that we know a God that's able to pick us up. And when God picks us up and transcends, even when we're passing away, that our soul goes back to the Lord. So, so, so we gone, but we ain't gone, gone. Thank you, Dr. Clark. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that, that, that not those who play God. Yeah, yeah, God alone handles that, but not those who play God. Uh, like, like, like those who uh, have slogans like, uh, make America great again. Yeah, because despite those four years of, uh, quote, unquote, being great again, far too many taxpaying American citizens were experiencing systematic inequalities. Yeah, but the Bible says God sent his son Jesus that we may all have life and have it more abundantly. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Verse 37. Now what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? That Jesus' invitation to discipleship is more about giving us something that we never could have afforded in the first place. Yeah. He just wanted us to have our values and costs in the right place. Dr. Clark used an illustration the other day, uh, and uh, I am so grateful for, for our pastor like you are, who is, who is a seasoned theologian uh, in this fellowship and around this country. But he used this, this very general uh, illustration that just blessed me about going to the, to the eye doctor. And I wore glasses, of course, so I was listening, and, and, uh, and, and he said, we go to the eye doctor, and there's a series of tests that we undergo in the eye doctor. And he, he was able to list all of them, you know, he, he, he can do it. And I, all I know is the vision test is the last one. But we go in the eye test, but, 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 but most of us, uh, most people, uh, they ain't hardly worrying about the actual vision test. What they worrying about is getting a good looking frame. But tell somebody that, that the frames don't help you see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and in life, when our, when, our, when our values and our costs are all on the wrong track, we find ourselves running after the frame, but the frame ain't gonna get us nowhere. We've been wearing masks uh, 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 and, and continue to wear them. I'm putting mine back on as soon as I get done. And, and, and they don't cost much, and, and they, don't, they, don't, they, don't, they don't weigh much, and they don't hardly look like nothing. People, you can't, sometimes you can't even notice people who you know, you don't even recognize them because they got this thing covering their face up. Yeah, but the value of this mass, yeah, 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 the value of this mass is keeping people alive. Yeah, we already mentioned over 500,000 people have died. And unfortunately, some of those people didn't value putting a mask on their face. Glory to his name. So Jesus, so Jesus is trying to tell us and that, 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 that we need to put some value on what the main thing is. And the main thing is following him. Not giving up. Not, not giving up something, but giving up self. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And when we find ourselves giving up self, we are a good candidate to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. And even when things get rough and things look bad, that ain't the end of the story. Hallelujah. Because we're in Christ and there's no failure in God. God can make a way out of no way. Yeah, it may look bad, even as he's announcing his passion prediction. And they put him on the cross. Yeah, yeah, and they took him down from the cross and put him in the grave. And it looked like the story was over. But the story wasn't over. Because on the third day morning, the Bible says God got him up. 
with all power, heaven and earth in his hand. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know him? Have you tried him? Well, if you know him and you tried him, you got to know that he's all right. Yeah, say that with me. He's all right. He's all right. I know he's all right. I know he's all right. Hallelujah. I'm here today because God in his grace and mercy has been all right in my life. Not because I've been so good. Not because I've been so kind. But because of his grace and his mercy. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. 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 Yeah, I'm really done. But the cost of discipleship is knowing, yeah, that the value of following Jesus is priceless. Glory to his name. Yeah, it's priceless because all of us were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Yeah, but Jesus paid it all. And all to him we owe because sin had left a crimson stain. But he washed. I said he washed. He washed it white as snow. Amen. 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 I don't know about you, but I'm happy this morning. I'm happy this morning. Glory to his name. Yes. I ain't nobody by myself. But in Christ, yeah, yeah, I'm more than a conqueror. Yeah, I'm the head. I am not the tail. Glory to his name. Because of Jesus Christ. Because of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, so where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. I'll go with him all the way. Yeah, he will give me grace and glory. He will give me grace and glory. He will give me grace and glory. Listen, he will be with me, with me all the way, all the way. Amen. Amen. With heads bowed and eyes closed. Hallelujah. God, we love you. We honor you. We thank you for being such a powerful God. We thank you for making a way for us. We thank you, God, for inviting us, despite of us, to be in a personal relationship with you. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for helping us to see the important things in life, which is you, oh God. We pray now that you would bless us and bless the people of God in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You ought to praise the Lord, right? Right there. Amen. 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 We are so grateful for God's word and for his mercy and for his, for his grace. His grace that was demonstrated uh, in his life and prior to his crucifixion and resurrection he sat down with his disciples and he took he took bread he took bread and he break it he said take eat this is my body which is broken for you then he took the cup and he poured and he said drink all of it this blood was shed for the remission of sins. Amen. That's how much he loves us. And then he said he won't drink, he won't eat the bread or drink of the fruit of the vine until he do it anew in the kingdom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We said we got a we got a home up in that kingdom. Yeah, ain't that good news? Ain't that good news? And coming to the table is a reminder that we're not by ourselves, that we're connected with God and we're connected with one another. So won't you, won't you gather, gather your elements for sharing communion, those of you who are watching and want to break bread with us on today. We want to give you an opportunity to, to grab your elements, your bread, and your wine, crackers, and juice. These are symbolic emblems of, of 
of the broken body and the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. Amen. I want to give you a couple of moments. The rest of you will see you on the on the grounds in just a moment. together let us drink together let us say amen together praise the Lord now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Father be glory dominion majesty and power both now and forever amen Amen. Shalom. See some of you in just a couple of moments. Hello, Shalom. My name is Deacon Damon Norfolk, and this is my wife, Monique Norfolk. Shalom, family. We are coming to you during this time of pandemic, understanding that this has been a difficult time for all of us. During this season, we also want to ask you to continue to remember our church. Please give of your tithes, offerings, and sacrificial gifts so they can be a blessing to our church in the upkeep and continuation of ministry. We want to share a personal testimony that during this pandemic, we have not lacked for anything, and we also have experienced a season where we've been able to tithe more than we've ever been able to before. We hope this serves as an encouragement to you as you think about giving your tithes, your offerings, and your sacrificial gifts as well. There are four ways to give. Go to Shalom website, give online, text, mail in, or take your tithing offering to the church office Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And Shalom family, be sure to tune in to live stream Sunday morning starting at 8 a.m. and Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. to watch our beloved Pastor Freddie Clark. Shalom family, we can't wait until we're able to worship with you again in person. Until then, stay healthy and know that we love you. Shalom and we love you. <laughs>